Hello and thank you for being here. Today we are announcing the arrest of a 38-year-old New York City man in the shooting of an NYPD police officer last Saturday night. Our officer, your officer, named Adid Fayaz, a 26-year-old married father of two young children, is in grave condition and is fighting for his life at this moment. Following this violent crime, the subject immediately went on the run, fleeing to a Rockland County motel room. He fled, but he could not evade our reach. In less than 46 hours, he was handcuffed by an NYPD detective assigned to the U.S. Marshals Regional Fugitive Task Force. We want to thank the extraordinary case detectives here, their NYPD colleagues, and all of the task force members from our law enforcement partner agencies for their swift and professional work. They are a steady reminder that the New York City investigators are the very best at what they do. Last night, the subject was returned to Brooklyn and remains in NYPD custody at this hour. He is expected to be charged later today. Chief Essig will provide some details about the investigation that led to his capture. New Yorkers, we are in this together. The victim in this case is an NYPD officer but we will relentlessly pursue anyone who carries an illegal firearms or shoots someone in this city. I will now turn it over to the Chief of Detectives, James Essex. Good morning, everybody. I just want to make a few introductions. To my right is Chief Fernando Gomez, the Detective Borough Brooklyn North Chief. Uh, and the two case detectives who worked tireless, tirelessly on this case for the last few days, Detective Ryan Lawson from the 7-5 Detective Precinct Squad and Detective Joe Brunetti from Brooklyn North Homicide. Also with us is Ralph Scozio from the U.S. Marshal's Office. <clears throat> so on Saturday, February 4th, at 6.55 p.m., 7-5 Precinct officers responded to 472 Ruby Street, that's in the East New York section of Brooklyn for a man shot. The victim was later identified as an off-duty police officer, Adid Faez, a male 26 years old. Investigation by the 7-5 Detective Squad and Brooklyn North Homicide revealed the following. Officer Faez was in contact with a male who was selling a Honda Pilot via Facebook Marketplace for $24,000. They had originally planned to meet the prior day, February 3rd, but that meet fell through as Officer Faiz could not make it and agreed to meet the next day. On February 4th at 6.50 p.m., Officer Faiz, along with his brother-in-law, arrived at Linden Boulevard and Ruby Street in two separate autos. Police Officer Faiz parked his auto on Linden Boulevard and proceeded to 472 Ruby Street and his brother-in-law's auto. At the location, they were met by a male wearing a black jacket, gray sweatpants, with a beard and mustache. The male proceeded to walk both men towards a driveway between 472 and 458 Ruby Street. The male then asked jokingly, are you guys carrying a gun? Both men responded no. At this time, our perpetrator grabs our MOS in a headlock, points the gun at his head, and demands the money. Our officer states he doesn't have the money, at which time the perpetrator points the firearm at the brother-in-law. Police officer Vaiz was able to break free, at which time the male fired, striking him in the head. As he flees, he continues to fire towards both the officer and his brother-in-law. The officer's brother-in-law removes the firearm from our MOS's uh, hip and returns fire at least six times. Our perpetrator jumps into a driver's seat of a black auto and speeds off. Investigators were able to view video of the brother-in-law's vehicle. This auto was a TLC plate and is equipped with dash cam video. Based on that video and computer work, Detectives were able to ID that auto as a 2011 BMW belonging to a Wanda Jones, a resident residing in a nearby pink housing development. Additional inquiries and investigative steps 
determined that Mrs. Jones had a son who fit the description of our Ruby Street perpetrator. Extensive video canvases pre-incident shows a male wearing an orange hoodie, black and blue jacket, gray sweatpants, and Timberline boots in and out of that same vehicle. Post-incident video, video, uh, video tracks that same vehicle on the South Conduit, westbound on the Grand Central Parkway over the Queensboro Bridge. At 8.10 p.m., video shows that vehicle pulling the apartment, a, a Department of Sanitation parking lot at 130th Street and Park Avenue. That same male wearing an orange sweat suit, sweatshirt, gray pants with a bag in his hand is seen exiting that auto. At 10.55 p.m., that male, along with the female and five young children, were seen on video exiting 1948 Park Avenue. They enter a gray 2010 Acura and drive off. Yesterday morning, after reviewing the video, electronic and eyewitness evidence, the Regional Fugitive Task Force began its search. They were able to track that auto to 367 New York Route 59 East, which is a day's in, in Nanuet, New York, room 216. A female, the girlfriend was present along with those five children, ages six months to 11 years. She was taken into custody and questioned. She is not being charged at this time. Also taken into custody was Randy Jones, a male 38 years old, with an address of 2878 Linden Boulevard in Brooklyn. Charges against Mr. Jones are pending as we are awaiting the execution of two search warrants. I just want to thank everybody who helped us in this, our NYPD members and also our federal partners, particularly the U.S. Marshal's Office, who was instrumental in the apprehension, and the Brooklyn DA's Office, particularly uh, our Homicide Bureau, Layla Rosini. And with that, I'd like to take any questions. Right, we'll start with Dean Moses. Uh, is it true that the uh, wounded officer's handcuffs were used to handcuff the suspect? And if so, can you talk about the symbolism of that? That, that is true. We used the officer Faiz's uh, cuffs to cuff the suspect on that. And, uh, you know, we wanted him to, to know who, who he, what he did to that officer, and that officer's cuffs went on him, and I think it sends a powerful message. Tony DeStefano. Uh, the children, or the children of uh, uh, Mr. Jones and the woman, or is it the woman's children, the real children? No, we, we, we don't know that yet. Uh, we haven't spoken to him. Uh, we know there were five young children taken in, and that, that'll be a part of the investigation, but they're with the mom right now. Rocco Pastor Gold, Daily News. Chief, did the, uh, did the officer postpone the initial meeting and then later show up with the brother in law because he had a level of concern about this guy? No, I, I, I think he wasn't feeling well on that day and he, he didn't go in, and the brother in law couldn't make it, so they postponed it to the next day. And the dialogue between them, does it all take place on Facebook or via text? And, and is, it, is it business like, or is there, again, is the officer raising any level of concern at all? Not that we know of. There was a, a, a phone conversation, and uh, they agreed to meet at that location. Christina, CBS. Um, is Jones suspected of any other similar robberies, or do we believe this was his first time? There, there are a few other social media Facebook marketplace robberies. One that happens just recently, I believe it was early January, right down the block. Uh, there's also some in, in South Queens, Southeast Queens that we're looking at to see if there's any co connections to Mr. Jones. Uh, Tina Moore? Um, what did he say right after? Do you guys have guns? He pulled gun out right away after that? He, do you have guns? It, it happens very quick. Do you have guns? He asked jokingly, uh, no. He then grabs our officer in a headlock real quick and demands money. Uh, when he says, I don't have any, points the gun at the brother-in-law. As our officer pulls, this happens in a matter of seconds. As our officer pulls free, he fires a shot strike at our officer. All right, guys, we'll do uh, two more. Uh, Aaron Was he working with anyone else? Were you looking for anyone else? Or was he doing this on his own posting Facebook offer? He, he's on 
this scene by himself. He posts it by himself. But we, we'll, we're looking at other crimes, and we'll see if there's any sort of crew or any additional perpetrators in this. All right, we're going to go on. Last question over here, Melissa. Yes, Mr. Jones has three prior three prior arrests, one in New York City from June of 2014 for strangulation, and two in Virginia, one in 14 and one in 15. All right. Um, Rocco, last question. Chief, uh, what, char what charges theoretically could Randy Jones face, and, and what did the suspect say, if anything, upon realizing, I'm assuming that Get shot a cop. Well, as he was taken into custody, he requested an attorney, so we haven't been able to speak to him. Uh, the least of his charges are murder, too. And Randy Jones? No, not Randy Jones, that's what I'm talking about. Yes.